You don't have to look around the world very far to know that it would be great if children could learn about money at an early age. But as a parent, how exactly do you go about teaching them? I've got someone to ask. I'm Jack Otter, editor of Barron's.com. I'm here with Lisa Detano, who is a managing director at Raymond James in Beverly Hills. And you've written a book about um, kids and money, and you really think about this a lot. So I want to get some advice from you. Let's just kind of do it chronologically. Um, at the early stages, maybe you're giving a small allowance to a child. Uh, how do you manage that? What do you tell them? Well, in my book, Treasures in the Winter Vault, Bobby is upset because he spent his allowance, and he's six years old, on candy and gum, and he really wanted a laptop or iPad, and he didn't have any money. So he sits down with his grandparents who tell him a story about saving. So I think the first thing that I encourage all of the families that we work for is to say, if you're going to give your child an allowance, make sure that they realize that they shouldn't just spend it all, right? Have a goal. What is it beyond the candy and gum for kids in the six to nine-year-old range, let's say, that excites them? Is it a new toy? Is it a game? Is it an application? And then have them put a certain percentage away and it can be in a piggy bank if it's a small ticket item, but if it's a big ticket item, actually take them into the bank or the, the brokerage firm or financial advisory firm where you work with an advisor and have them make a deposit like we used to in the old days where you take your savings book in and you get it stamped. And I think that kind of reinforces the idea that you're building for the future. That physical act uh, helps yeah. them realize what's, what's going on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, another thing, of course, that we all learn about money at one point or another is that old people don't just hand it to you. <laughs> you have to go out and earn it. Uh, and so this is something else that you talk about, which is chores. Now, maybe there's a nominal allowance just because they're your kid. Uh, but then if they do some work for you, they might make some extra money. Sure. Um, my grandfather had a small motel by Disneyland. And starting from when I was grandfather had a small motel by Disneyland. And starting from when I was five years old, uh, at around five or six, he would tell me clock in. And I would fold towels with the housekeepers and roll coin for him to take to the bank. So I think the laundry list at chores, you know, at, at my house, my mom would have me hose down the patio uh, every day when I'd get back from school by the time I was like seven or eight. But make a list of chores and it's sort of pay to play, right? Pay for performance, being a good citizen. Uh, learning again, it's not what you make, it's what you save. And um, having a you save and um, having a goal where you sit down with your family and your child save of the money I gave you, um, or how much do you want to put into the saving account this week, put into the saving account this week, and what do you decide to spend uh, for you're getting buy-in to be on a savings plan. Uh, so obviously those are very important things to internalize from an early age. Another thing as adults we realize is that there's no sort of built-in education about things financial. In school, often families are a bit closed about this sort of thing. So you encourage transparency, whether it's college savings or whatever. So tell us about that. I, I do, actually. You know, back in my time when I was a young person, it was sort of don't ask, don't tell. Everything was cloaked and secret about money. And I try to encourage the matriarch and patriarch uh, of families that I work for uh, and tell them, let's, you know, with what you're comfortable, kind of unwrap what we're doing here. And a good place to start is in a college savings plan. And let's actually tell your daughter or son or grandchildren how much you're saving and let them know early on how much it's going to cost to put them through school. And I think encourage them to have maybe a part-time summer job, right, to put in to the till, if you will, so you get buy-in and they get rewarded, actually. You could even do an incentive plan where the more they save, the more you will put in 
for the savings for not only for college, but as kids get older, right, they want a car because that represents freedom, right? So I think encouraging the open communication, avoiding conflict issues with money, teaching kids early on about saving instead of spending, being good citizens, um, and compounding, investing money, what all that means. Uh, and finally, you mentioned good citizens. Uh, you do talk a little bit about philanthropy, and you get them started on that early. Can you explain that? Sure. Uh, I find it very interesting and love to do what we call multi-generational planning, where we start with the patriarch and matriarch who made the money for the family and really ask those individuals what was important to them and what is important to them throughout their life as far as giving back. And then I try to work with the family and instill that messaging to the parents and the grandkids and the great grandkids. And many times um, I find the great grandkids find the great grandkids aren't even sure what grandma and grandpa did to earn the money. And it's a starting place, perhaps, and it would actually thrill the matriarch and patriarch if they're into baseball for young kids and if their grandkids can get involved and give back in a way that they're um, excited about as well, right? So it preserves the legacy, if you will, of how the money or the family wealth was created. Thanks very much, Lisa. Thank you.